Welcome to this video on Introduction to Brain Extraction and Registration. My name is Mark Jenkinson and I'll be talking to you about this overview of how we use brain extraction and registration when analysing neuroimaging data. So I'll start by explaining what registration is. So if we look at these two images, you can easily tell that they are not aligned. One is tilted with respect to the other. The human visual system is great for being able to determine that. But whenever we do an analysis, we actually need to make sure that we do have them aligned and that we do have a correspondence so that if we pick one particular location within the image, that is a particular row and column in these particular sort of 2D panels, then it represents the same anatomy. You can see here that it doesn't represent the same anatomy at the moment. It overlaps quite significantly with the ventricles on the right and it doesn't on the left. If we actually align these images or register them, and those are the two things mean pretty much the same thing. Registration is the process whereby we align the images. Then after registration, they're well aligned and you can see that actually now that location represents the same anatomy in both of these images. And that's really what we're after. We're after a process whereby through registration, we end up with images where if we pick the same location within the image that is specifying the coordinates, we will end up with the same bit of anatomy within those different images. We'll also see that it's important to take account of what that does to the intensities as well in a later video. We use it whenever we have a group study. Whenever we're looking at different individuals, we need to make sure that we can align them and so that when we look at the images, we can take one particular location and have the same anatomy for all of the different individuals so that we can make maps of what's happening in different locations within the brain. We also use it for other things, such as correcting for motion, which you can see on the bottom right there. This is just an illustration where we've got different orientations through time. And that's very common if you're doing diffusion imaging or functional imaging. Those images would look a bit, little bit different from that, but the prospect is the same. You acquire different images, and if the subject is moving their head during that acquisition, then actually they're not aligned to start with, and we need to use registration to correct for that motion and realign them. On the bottom left, you can see an indication of what other things we can do with registration, such as looking at the structure and the anatomy and trying to quantify what is in the anatomy and how that might be changing either between different groups or over time within individuals. And so we use registration for structural analysis, for diffusion analysis, for function analysis. One of the first things that we do when we look at registration is that we do brain extraction. And within the FSL, we have a tool called BET, which does brain extraction. And the idea of this is that it's simply separating out the bulk of the non-brain material from the brain material. You can see that in the video here. The non-brain material is in orange, the brain is in gray. And we're simply trying to separate those out so that the algorithms that we have are not distracted, they're not biased by whatever is in the non-brain because we don't care if the nose is a different size, for instance, and they don't spend extra time analysing things that we don't care about. So it's very helpful for us to be able to do this separation. It's a fairly straightforward tool. It can take images of different modalities. It's quite fast and it works very generally. It doesn't try to get into the deep um, folds of the brain. What you can see in the bottom here is a cortical surface extraction. And we would do that with something like FreeSurfer. And that's a very detailed, complicated process to go into. That's not what we're aiming to do in brain extraction. We're just aiming to get what you see on the top there, which is a simple separation, which gets the bulk of the non-brain materials outside of that surface. And inside of that surface is all the brain, and some other materials. There'll be some CSF, which is outside of the brain, which will be within that surface, as well as some membranes, some amount of sort of blood vessels and other things. We're not trying to be super accurate at this point. We're trying to get rid of the bulk of the non-brain material. Here's an illustration of what it looks like. Again, you can see the white outlines around the different ones. If you look at the sagittal in particular, you can see that at this point we have to make an arbitrary cutoff across the brainstem because the brainstem and the spinal cord are continuous. So there's an arbitrary point that we have to cut that off. And you can also see that there are other things which are not exactly the brain which continue to be included in that brain extraction. And that's fine. That is actually absolutely okay for the purposes that we would use it in registration. 
The bottom right shows you an illustration of how it works. We start with the sphere and actually we expand that in general. If it's outside the brain to start with, we would push it back in and it tries to find the edge of the brain. When you run the tool, you can either get a brain extracted image, which is what you can see in the middle there. So we start with the original image on the left and we can either get a brain extracted image or we could get a brain mask. And that brain mask image is just one, the value of one for every voxel inside the brain and zero outside. And it doesn't matter which one we get. If we get a brain mask, we can easily use that to mask the original image to create a brain extracted image. If we have a brain extracted image, we can simply calculate which voxels are non-zero and create a brain mask. So it's very easy to have one or other of those two on the right, and that's totally normal. And you'll often see that we will have one or the other or both in outputs. Brain extraction does have some difficulties. As I said, we're not trying to get absolute accuracy and rid of all different types of tissue, but you will see that there are places where it's quite difficult to do it, where you've got marrow which sits right next to the brain, or at least it looks like that because often it's shifted in the imaging process. It's not exactly where it should be anatomically. There are membranes, there's blood, um, and they all are quite close and they're often included within our brain extracted image. And that's generally fine. For the purposes of registration, we're happy with that. But just be aware that these are the kind of things which make it difficult. And if you look at the middle row, then actually the one on the left is a lot easier to deal with because we don't really see the marrow there. And that's when we've got some fat suppression applied. And fat suppression does make brain extraction easier. What we're aiming for, I said, is to get rid of the bulk of the non-brain material. And so if you look at the example on the top, there are a couple of little bits of non-brain material which are left over. And that's fine. For the purposes of registration, we're not going to be put off by that. It's going to work just fine. It's got rid of the vast majority of the non-brain material. So that would be an acceptable result for registration. If we were trying to quantify the amount of grey matter, then that would be a problem. So for segmentation, we need to be a bit more accurate. But for registration, that's fine. In the bottom row, you can see the original image on the left and then the, in the middle is a failure. So that's a brain extraction, which is not acceptable because there's clearly a lot of non-brain material which has been left behind. And actually at the top, it's taken off some of the brain. So we're not happy with that. And that would not be good enough for registration. Whereas on the right-hand side, we've got something where you can still see that there are little bits of non-brain material left over, but that's totally fine. That would work very well for registration purposes. And once we've done brain extraction, then we can do our registration of our different images either to each other or to a standard template or across time. And so registration is then the, the second step that we would do after the brain extraction. And as I said, it's used very commonly in all sorts of settings. So it's something that you sh should be familiar with. And that's all I wanted to say in this overview. The summary is that we use registration to align images or align the structures within the images so that we've got the same anatomy at the same voxel location or the same coordinate within the image. We transform all the images to match the others and it is used in every group study that you are going to look at when you're trying to produce maps of what's going on in the brain. It can measure motion across time such as in diffusion imaging or in functional imaging it can also look at anatomical change in structural imaging. So it's used in various different contexts. We use brain extraction to remove the bulk of the non-brain material, and that's a step that we would do, normally do before registration. Some errors are to be expected, and small ones are just fine, as long as they're small and isolated. If they are large, that's a problem, but also if they're small but present over a very large area, that can be a problem as well. So just check to see that there, there are no obvious consistent errors that you're seeing in your brain extraction. It's only small, small little bits and pieces. That would be fine for registration. It would not be for segmentation, but for registration, it would be just fine.